I'm a little bit behind in the videos. Uh, this one here documents the remainder of the four deck repair and um, sort of picks up where the last one left off with cutting off the skin, pulling out the old wet core that was inside, and then prepping the area for new core and new glass, which meant taking a sander to the perimeter. I'd left about a three inch margin all the way around. <clears throat> so taking a sander to that area and grinding it down to a taper so that the new layers of glass would transition onto the old deck structure and then up just a little bit uh, the side of the gunnel there. Task was a little bit more difficult because right before spring break I'd cut my finger, but I forged ahead and did what I could. Made good progress. All right, <clears throat> getting ready to quit. I uh, use my new sander, like it a lot. The vacuum attachment is fantastic. Uh, it's slower than the angle grinder, which isn't surprising, but did a nice job of sanding in the bevel around the perimeter here, uh, using 40 grit paper on there. So I made it basically halfway, and then I sanded you know, three quarters of the bottom skin here. So pretty nice. I had tented the bow again because I was planning on using the grinder and making a lot of dust. But this thing right here is fantastic. So no dust. I've got a headlamp on. I didn't see any dust particles in the air or anything like that. So pretty impressive. So coming along, I've run out of steam. Time to go home. Got to get ready for the week. But uh, looks like maybe Friday I'll be ready to... Um, pattern for the new core and rough it in coming along I used the fiberglass skins that I'd cut off the four deck as patterns laid them atop some marine grade plywood traced it out and cut it out and then because I wanted the new deck material to be one solid piece I beveled the edges and cut curved pieces that would fit underneath <laughs> The idea was to have solid core that I could slide under the edges that I'd left for adhering the new glass to. So I made patterns and cut them out, beveled them so that all of the edges would fit together with thickened epoxy, making the deck structure one solid piece. Um, my first sheet of plywood, I went with a marine grade, but it was not the uh, established and known marine grade and when I got into it I decided there were too many voids so I got some Maranti Hydrotech and uh, started all over <laughs> and uh, same process went ahead and cut it to shape beveled the edges this time though I made cutouts in the area of the Samson post and the hose pipe and installed sol solid fiberglass plate you can see that there so that the water wouldn't penetrate the core there are the pieces of the new deck on the bottom, or the new core structure on the bottom, and then the new filler pieces that would go around the side. Everything all beveled up and just about ready to be fitted in the boat. Um, with the new core glued down to the skin beneath, I laid Duraskrim over top and made a pattern so that I could uh, easily cut out fiberglass um, without guessing, you know, on the dimensions. But this way, just lay it over top, trace it, and I was good to go. Here is the deck structure all cleaned up. You can see the piece of deck core leaning upright against the forward cabin house. This was before I glued the side pieces in with thickened epoxy, which you can see here. All of the uh, pieces of plywood are glued in place and I've spread thickened epoxy on the bottom skin ready for the deck to go down. This is a pattern for the fiberglass cloth. I needed to bring the total thickness up just a little bit over the thickness of the core. So we're ready to do the first couple layers of fiberglass on the foredeck and Carrie's here and Jake and Josh. They're my mixing crew. Deck is 83 degrees. Today is supposed to be a high of 85. Behind Carrie, the resin and hardener are in an ice bath that will hopefully keep the epoxy from kicking off so quickly. I have a few patches made up that are going to fill a couple low spots. So I'm going to do those now. 
And then uh, we have two layers of glass that are going to fit in the dimension of the plywood to bring it up to level with the surrounding area. Once we were ready to go with the fiberglass, I wetted it all out and covered it with peel ply. So the other day I got two layers of glass down covering the dimension of the plywood. Tomorrow's supposed to be cooler and so I'll be able to do the next, I hope, three or four layers is the plan. That'll then transition into the existing edges, the tapered edges there of the deck. But right now it is crazy hot. In fact, it is on deck. On deck is 93 degrees. Uh, let's see, flyer bridge. Yeah, 93, oh, 94. And then up there, da -da -da -da, oh, we got 100 degrees. Yeah, good and hot. When we finally got a good day to do some serious glassing, I cut all the remaining layers, totaling 10 layers of fiberglass cloth, and we started a fiberglassing marathon. My son, two sons helped mix, my wife helped mix, and then my eldest son and I, we wetted it out layer after layer after layer. Things went down perfectly, worked out all the air bubbles and let it set up. Pulling the peel ply has got to be one of the most satisfying parts of a fiberglass job. So both of my boys enjoyed uh, ripping it up there. When I wasn't working on the deck, I was laminating up the white oak for a Samson post, four inches by four inches by about six feet long. So shaped it, cut the hole in the deck, set the Samson post down through into the four peak and bedded it in thickened epoxy. After verifying that the angle was correct and all of that, you can see the white PVC hose there. Uh, in the background, that's the new anchor locker drain. So once the post had set up, we were ready to do uh, more work up on deck. Total deck thickness came out to an inch, and that's solid glass right there. On deck, the Samson post looked good, liked the angles. Now it needed to move on to notching it and fitting the bowsprit to it. All right, so yesterday, Jake and I did a preliminary fit of the Samson post epoxied it in down inside the V-berth into the hull, bedded it in thickened epoxy after determining the geometry, what angle it needed to be at and so on. So today we, as you can tell, been doing some woodwork. Um, I went ahead and you'll see that the bowsprit is notched and well, anyway, it's cut so that it's full thickness on the Samson post there and then slightly less here so that the Samson post or the bowsprit slides into the Samson post. So today what we did is uh, made some careful measurements and went ahead and notched it out with a router bit, snagged the wood there and ripped the grain a little bit, which really stinks. But I think that area can be, we'll just sand it down a little bit and take these hard corners out so that they don't have a tendency to split anyway. Anyway, so notched it all the way, three sides. And then the tricky part was that here where the <clears throat> bowsprit attaches to the cap rail, there is a bolt that goes at an angle through the bowsprit and then threads into the cap rail. And so what I needed to do was to make sure that the bowsprit was sitting flat on this portion of the cap rail and that it intersected the Samson post at the right angle so that this, so that basically the hole in the bowsprit and the hole in the cap rail would line up, not just one on top of the other, but at the same angle. So after a little, here comes dad and Layla. So let's see if I can do this with one hand. I don't think I can. I'm gonna have to get a kid. All right, so here we go. Line it up carefully so that nothing splits. 
slide the bowsprit aft onto the Samson post into position. There we go. And then up here, Jake in the bow. Now up there on the bowsprit. And the bolt. Perfect. Lines right up. We have to know that we have some chip rushes somewhere. There you go. There's a whole box somewhere. All right, so Samson Post is tabbed in with three layers of fiberglass on each side. So three layers starboard, three layers port, three forward, three aft. And that is that 1708 biaxial. So it's actually right around 18 ounces for each layer. Um, anyway, ran them out onto the hull. Started with a 10 inch patch, then eight, then no, 10, nine, and eight. That's what I did. So ran them up the post, tried to split the difference, and then down onto the hull. So did a fillet underneath so it's thickened epoxy um, form to form a radius where the Samson post and the deck meet and that radius helps the fiberglass transition as opposed to an abrupt 90 degree angle or thereabouts. Anyway, so good day's work. And I coated the post with leftover epoxy just to kind of seal it. I'll do more of that later. This is the base of the Samson post and I have fiberglassed it to the hull in the area of the four peak and basically I had three distinct sections of glass so that's one two and then in front of oops there's another third piece so I ran glass from the starboard side down and then up onto the hull and those extend forward into that area so it kind of at an angle and then I did the same thing on the port side ran glass up the beam post and then up onto the hull and forward and then what I did yeah, let me climb in there and then what I did was yeah, tie it together in the bow area oops there we go with other layers of glass so I'm hoping that that is going to be sufficiently strong. The bottom of the post is bedded in thickened epoxy, which, you know, by itself is pretty good, except for the fact that it doesn't have as much strength as fiberglass. Um, so, six layers of 18 ounce glass on this side and on this side, and I was planning six layers there at the forward part but um, it started to get too hard to work and I was worried about disturbing compromising the bond in this area and there uh, just because it was sort of starting to gel and I didn't want the new glass to interfere with how that adheres to the area around it um, original construction, I don't know, some people may remember that it looked like they put the Samson post in and then basically they had just thrown in like chopped strand mat and poured resin on it and then kind of, you know, took a stick and poked it all down and around the post and so on. That was, I think, when the bulkhead was in. I don't know how they did it exactly. But anyway, there was no real rhyme or reason to it and there were fairly significant voids underneath you know it kind of came down and then went across and up and there were voids between the layers of glass and you know so it wasn't a nicely uh, laid up laminate I'm hoping that because this is a epoxy and because this is a more modern cloth that is not just woven roving or chopped strand but it's actually biaxial with some mat on it that um, I'll have a better bond and more strength. 
Carrie helped me today. And we worked down here in the V-berth, tried not to make a mess with anything. It's one of the two layers that I opted not to use up in the forward part. Anyway, cleaned up the boat today, got all the tools, not all, a lot of the tools off and Carrie vacuumed the decks and cleaned up all the dirt that was all over. Put the refrigerator back in. And then we got, this is another thing too, is that tabbing was not in the original construction. So the post has two points of attachment, three if you count the bowsprit. Originally, it only had the bowsprit and then the foot of the post down in the cabin. So this has got to be stronger, right? With the Samson post in place, I needed to make a new anchor locker drain. So that's what you see here is a piece of fiberglass that'll form the bottom of the new anchor locker. Made a template and uh, added a one and a half inch Maranti bulkhead for the anchor locker. Tabbed it to the hull with a couple layers on the aft face and then eventually once I cut the access, tabbed it inside too with a couple layers of fiberglass cloth. I marked out the dimensions for the new opening, drilled a hole and then used a nice little pole saw to cut around the tape to make my hatch. All right, so <clears throat> the final cut here for this hatch. Let's see what we can do. Left-handed. Maybe I should do right-handed. That's it. Got a couple pieces wedged in there. Let's see what I can do. There it comes. There we go. That is the new anchor locker access. Hopefully it's square and centered a lot on the boat. <laughs> Took my time measuring, so. And then the Samson post is located just behind it. And I cut through without nicking the Samson post, so that's good. Very nice. All right, next thing is to glass the inside of the bulkhead to the hull in there. Cool. I like it. <laughs> Meanwhile, summer was well underway and we didn't have the boat in the water. Once uh, she was to the point where she could go in the water, we went ahead and had her launched and decided that we would finish up the remaining tasks in the comfort of the slip at the marina, which was nice. It was nice to be in the water. It was nice to have the sunshine and not be in the hot shed anymore. By this point, the foredeck had been completely glassed and primed. And you can see here the white primer on the foredeck, Molly in her slip. I hadn't yet put the windlass on, but she's getting there. This next view is kind of tough to tell what you're looking at, but that's the bottom of the anchor locker all glassed in place, up the Samson post, onto the bulkhead, and onto the hull sides. While Molly was in her slip, my parents started working on painting the foredeck and actually ended up painting all of Molly's deck. So she came together, looks really good. You can see that I still needed to put the bungs in for the cleat that mounts to the aft face of the Samson post, but that all got done too, and the post painted. Inside the boat, I reinstalled the shelves, port and starboard, after putting up new liner on the hull. Bought some uh, Naga hide type material, lined both sides of the V-berth, put the shelves back in place. Uh, both of them fit perfectly. They weren't too tight, they weren't too loose, they went right into place, mounted in basically their original location. Uh, here the hatch has been cut out and two hinges put placed at the bottom so that it would swing down from the top. Samson post added a little bit of shape to it so that it would hold a line a little bit better. And finished up the wiring for the windlass and we decided to go out. But I'm getting ahead of myself. There were several other projects that we needed to wrap up before Molly was ready to go in the water. So I will fill you in on those next time.